begonnen bij beide scholen. Dus dat is een van Hoboken en dat is een van Antwerpen. Maar nu uh, heeft de Raad van het Gemeenschapsonderwijs beslist dat het over heel Vlaanderen zal zijn. Er zouden dus, zogezegd moslimmeisjes zijn, dus hoofddoekdragende meisjes, die uh, andere meisjes, dus niet hoofddoekdragende meisjes, onder druk zouden zetten om die hoofddoek wel te dragen. Het is natuurlijk religie, hè. het heeft met mijn geloof te maken, maar zodra dat je, dat je overtuigd bent dat dat voor je goed is en dat je je daar goed bij voelt, dan zie je dat ook niet meer als een verplichting. En dat is waar de meeste mensen zich de, de fout maken van het is een verplichting, dus je bent sowieso onder druk gezet. Nee, van zodra je die overtuiging hebt, zie je dat gewoon als een richtlijn. En als je die volgt, je voelt je er goed bij, waarom dan niet? Als ik het begrijp, zijn we hier vandaag om de verbanding van de hijab in de publieke scholen van België. And so we need to discuss uh, the background, we need to discuss the environment, we need to discuss the definition of the hijab itself because we cannot be certain that all Muslims understand what is the hijab. If a Muslim woman hasn't read the Quran, she has not read the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu she's just wearing the hijab because her father said, her grandfather said, it's just the people, her town, her village, her country, she's just wearing it in spite of whatever. She ain't questioned why in her heart, no connection to Allah. She ain't doing it from her own choice. She, she feels like she's being compelled to do that. That's called the cultural hijab. But that has nothing to do with Islam. Dat heeft te maken met ignorante mensen die haar dat gedachte gegeven hebben. En die ignorante, die onverschillige ignorante zuster die zo denkt. Nu, ze zeggen ook dat hijab een politieke statement is. Je weet, alsof een vrouw met een scarf op haar hoofd, op een of andere manier, het in een kind of politieke statement Zoals, like, ik ben een moslim, check me uit. We willen de islamische staat You know, we niet we not met de kafirs, we zijn niet in obedience. You know, we zijn dit, dus we zijn. Check us out, we are extremists. Check us out, we are fanatics. Check us out, we are with Qaeda. Check us out, we are with Taliban. You know, like as if a sister just choosing to cover herself, protect herself, is making some kind of a political statement. It's just absurd. Muslim countries, I want to uh, emphasize, are in fact using the hijab as a tool of oppression and a social suppression and denial of women. That's Muslim countries. Those are not Islamic countries. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't use corporal enforcement. That means forcing women to wear the hijab in the Muslim countries. This wasn't in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It wasn't in the time of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Therefore, we can say that Muslims around the world who are forcing their daughters or their mothers or their wives to wear the hijab either to school or anywhere else, they are violating the principle of Islam. As a matter of fact, if your wife or your daughter or your sister tomorrow just woke up and changed her mind and instead of putting on hijab, she just put on a bikini and walked out the door, well, you would be surprised, you would be shocked, but there's nothing you can do. You can talk to her, but you can't even put your hands on her to stop her from going outside the door because then, therefore, you're violating another rule. So Muslims need to understand where they are. They see me as a person interfering. They think that I should be like a firebrand speaker. But I'm a firebrand speaker talking to them about reforming their behavior. The, the, the older people don't like it. The younger people tolerate it. country is more sophisticated than the treatment of human beings in the Muslim world. Now, that, now that's a fact. Now, I'm not, I didn't read that in the book. 
You know, I've been all over the Muslim world. And I can say that the, that the animal rights in this country is more guaranteed and more sophisticated than the human rights in the Muslim world. So do we have something to be grateful for? Of course we do. I think I got the best part of the pie. But then I got to give something back. I don't want to leave this world and leave my children, my grandchildren, thinking to themselves that we're not Americans. I mean, am I American? You know, sometimes I'm in a mosque and I ask the Muslims, are you guys Dutch? And people look around at each other and they're actually sitting, trying to figure out whether they should say they're Dutch or not. <laughs> so what kind of mentality is that? Muslims have to own up to what's called civic, social, citizenship responsibility. And that's, just, that's not just taking. It's taking and giving. Maybe this is why people are afraid. You see, as long as Islam could be attached to some kind of uh, ethnic phenomena, you know, in America, African Americans, then white people could still feel a bit safe because it's contained, you see. Uh, as long as Islam was an ethnic phenomena in Europe, the, whether the Moroccans or the Algerians or the Turkish or whatever, as long as it could be like that, it could still be contained. But now it has broke that mold. It has produced another culture that blends with the existing culture. You see the European youth accepting Islam and their expression of Islam will have some taints of uh, the, 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 the ethnic group, but they will develop their own identity after a certain amount of time. Okay, so we can book an appointment with Sheikh Hassan, and the earliest one is in October, uh, 6th of October, at um, 4 30. Oh, no, yeah, this is 4 0 4 connection. You go, uh, 5 minutes booked. Okay. There are marriages which are not registered in this country. They are done in the mosque, for example, or in some houses. Because they are not registered in a civil registry, this is why the couple, if they want to divorce, they don't have access to the civil divorce at all. So for them, this is the only way. They come here, we have to listen to both parties, and this is what we do. And she wants to apply from Holland. She, she is in Holland. Okay, and does she... She, she, she knows for, if the husband doesn't agree, she will have to come for the meeting. Sharia, as we see it, is a way towards conforming to what God has ordered. It will, regulate, it will help to regulate um, the lives of Muslims in their private uh, affairs. And that's the most that can be done from a Sharia point of view. You know, it's called, it's called family law, personal law. Uh, it's, been, it, it's, it's been applied in many Western countries before when it comes to Muslims. As a matter of fact, the Muslims are not the first ones to do that. The Jewish people have been doing that for the last 50 or 60 years. In America and in Europe, uh, they have their own uh, Talmud courts, okay, so that if there's divorces or there's issues or problems, uh, uh, it would be held within that Talmud uh, uh, type of uh, a setting. So there's nothing to fear. Uh, and there is portions of Sharia which is uh, uh, very much uh, consistent with the moral fabric of, Western, of the Western world. Uh, and so, for instance, uh, what is Sharia going to do? Are we going to stone people? No. Are we going to whip people? No. Are we going to cut off hands? Of course not. In Islam, there is a balance which has been created in the matrimonial life. When a divorce happens, the custody of the children normally goes to the woman. So when a woman comes asking for divorce, suppose there are a child or two children in that marriage, she is not going to lose anything because she knows that the custody of the children is given to her. She is not going to lose anything. The man has lost his children. 
he got only an access to see them from time to time. So he has to suffer. So we can say that in Islam a balance has been created that the right of divorce primarily is given to the man because the man has to think twice before he divorces his wife that if I divorce my wife, my children will go away from me and they would be taken by my wife. So he would be very reluctant to give divorce because he knows what he is going to suffer. I have my civil divorce. You got your civil divorce? Yeah, I got it. Right. Which is on 20th of January. Yeah. Hmm? After two years, I got that. Hmm. Uh, did you provide us with this? Yeah, I did. Um, get it when I came in with the application form. Mm -hmm. It is very explicitly recorded in our forms that this couple should apply for a civil divorce because we don't want the people hanging. Ah. As 